Page six now are international headlines. We're continuing to learn more information about the deadly shooting in New Zealand. On Friday morning, at least 49 people were killed and 20 others injured when gunfire rang out at two mosques in Christchurch. The country's prime minister called that attack an unprecedented act of violence in one of New Zealand's darkest days. Also on Friday, a major escalation in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Israel Defense Forces launched attacks on 100 Hamas targets in response to rockets fired by Hamas at Israeli civilians. Joining me now to help us better understand the ongoing chaos, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Nussbaum. Barry, thanks for joining us tonight. And I want to start in New Zealand. Just a horrible situation all around, but it really gets difficult to talk about these issues, especially when there's politics and religion involved. So really, I just want to ask you, what was your takeaway from what happened on Friday? Well, it goes without saying that the mass murder of any in innocent civilians is horrific and it is unjustifiable and we should leave it at that. Uh, it's a tragedy whether it happens here or there or anywhere around the world. The important news that is not coming out is possibly the background of what might have motivated this. Beginning in 2016, uh, mainstream Islamic uh, scholars, especially in Egypt, were so distressed about the radicalization of the mosques in New Zealand that Egypt, who is not a moderate Islamic country, sent imams to moderate what the mosques were being told in New Zealand by their imams. In other words, they were being preached hatred of their host country. They were being uh, preached not to assimilate and not to be members of the New Zealand society. And Egypt was sending teachers to straighten them out and to be more New Zealand-ish and less radical. I don't know if it has anything to do with this. I don't even know if it's gonna make the news, but if you go Google it, you're gonna see the stories about how Egypt sent many teachers into New Zealand to try and calm down what their uh, adherents, at least in the mosques in New Zealand, were being told. And you bring up the term Google it, and I think that's actually kind of perfect in this situation because this was brought up beforehand on social media. This wasn't an isolated attack where all of a sudden he just out of nowhere said this is something going to happen. He was vocally publicizing this on uh, 8chan, Twitter, uh, Reddit, different publications like that or the Internet. So I, I want to ask you, how do we prevent attacks like this in the future? This was an event that was live streamed on Facebook for 17 minutes before it was taken down. Is the onus on the New Zealand government or is it on tech giants to really prevent something like this from happening again? You know, when the various tech giants, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, claim non-responsibility uh, regarding what's on their platforms, I'm disgusted. Because the truth is, and you make a very, very good point, um, these various crazy people that go mass murder in innocence often telegraph this all over social media. It's right there to read about. And quite frankly, these um, attacks, many of them are preventable by just having law enforcement working with the tech um, platforms to be able to weed out the crazy people who often in advance are proclaiming, I'm going to kill people that I hate. Yeah, and we've seen it happen time and time again. This isn't the first time where someone's vocalized their plans beforehand. But I want to pivot now to the Middle East. Uh, the, another thing that you might not see on the news today, especially given the other news that happened, and you certainly won't hear about it the United Nations, is the fact that Israel was attacked, rocket fire came over into their territory, and they responded on Hamas targets with 100 different targets, uh, most of them weapons depots, n not any actually civilian type of locations. What is the ongoing escalation in the Middle East? Because there has been some more escalation since 2015. This might be the biggest one since 2015. What is going on right now in the Middle East? Well, first of all, it is the biggest uh, change in facts on the ground in Israel since 2015 because rockets were sent to Tel Aviv, the capital uh, of all of industry and the main population center uh, of Israel. Um, I actually spoke to my daughter who was at the airport when the rockets were coming in and listening to the sirens going off and it's terrifying as a parent to have to listen to that. The really bizarre Israeli policy that did not change in the last 24 hours is the following. Israel gets hit in its population centers. Over 100 rockets came into Israel, uh, according to some sources. And what did Israel do? 
They targeted Hamas military installations, but waited for them to be evacuated. Most of the Hamas leadership runs to the main hospital in Gaza City where they hide, knowing that buildings are going to be blown up, but nobody's going to be hurt. The entire death toll from all of the Israeli strikes into Gaza, get this, zero dead because Israel will not allow casualties to be taken. So they telegraph what they're going to do, they wait for the buildings to empty, and then they blow them up. It literally does nothing, and I mean nothing, to defer more attacks. And now, there's a radical Islamic group in, is in the Gaza that's pro proclaiming to Israel and the rest of the world. They fired the missiles. They say they got the technology from Iran and they can hit, get this, Tel Aviv at will. It's a scary, scary escalation. Ironically, on the day that those missiles were fired, Egypt had a delegation in Gaza trying to convince the Hamas leadership to calm down before Israel finally has to go in and take them out. That is what I think needs to happen. The leadership of Hamas needs to be targeted. Enough with the, hey, we're gonna blow up your building and evacuate before our missiles get there and go get the people responsible for terrorizing all of Southern Israel. As you know, I was in Sterot last year and the buildings all have pock markets, mock markets all over them from missiles coming in from Gaza across the border a quarter of a mile away, basically across the field. And Israel does nothing to deter it. It's about time they literally went in and took these people out before more Israelis, especially in civilian areas, get killed. Yeah, in places like Sarot, when bus stops have to double as bunkers, it's usually a bad sign for that community. But uh, thank you very much, Barry, for joining us tonight.